Green mate, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I did say that the conversation around professional mobile workstations had changed. Uh, I think I might have been right on that one. Let's take a look why. So this video is about MSI's Create Pro X17. It's not so much about this unit in particular, but what this represents moving forward. So there's a bit of a tale to this with the protagonist being MSI. Um, it's not MSI's first soiree into the professional mobile workstation arena, mind you. They've had units out in the past, but there was never really a compelling reason to go for something from the likes of MSI, when a lot of companies have got corporate agreements in place with Dell, the Precisions, HP for Zbooks, the Novos, the ThinkPads. They cost a lot more, but there was little, if any, performance gain to be had from going for one of those units. But companies went for them because that's what they've always done. They were the safe bet. You got the mobile Xeon in there, you got the professional graphics, you got ECC RAM, and something that you knew you could just rely on. But problem is, this year, mate, the conversation has completely changed. The landscape of professional workstations has changed entirely because Intel stopped producing mobile Xeon processors. And now, the platform that all mobile workstations are based on is Intel's Core HX platform, which is present now in this MSI's Creator Pro X17, and the exact same CPU is present in Dell's Precision this year, which this one being the 7770. But why, why would you consider something like this? What's changed? Well, quite a lot, and I've covered this extensively on the channel, but to cut a very long story short, the Core HX mobile processor is exceptionally power hungry. It demands a lot of power and it needs a system built around it that can cope with its needs. Dell weren't able to do that. This precision is probably, because I can't go back to their entire, you know, the start of Dell's history, but this is probably one of the worst laptops that Dell have ever produced by a long shot. It is absolutely disgraceful. I don't know which degenerate made the decisions that came together to form this system, but it's awful. MSI, on the other hand, they coped with the Core HX platform exceptionally well. And they did it first with their Titan laptops. So the MSI GT77 Titan was one of the first platforms that was introduced to the market with the 12th gen Core HX CPUs in. And as much as Dell sent me that one so I could use it full time as my daily driver, I couldn't, it was too poor. MSI, on the other hand, I've been using the GT77 Titan for the longest time, probably six to eight months now, is my main system. It does play all my games on it, run my channel on it, I do my professional work on it. Problem though with the GT77 Titan is it has a GeForce card in it. It's got the 3080 Ti. You can option it with the 3070 Ti. A lot of Autodesk design applications and other professional applications work just fine on a GeForce card, but in the last eight months, I have experienced a couple of glitches because of the GeForce drivers that have wasted a few hours of my time and I've just wished, I've just wished that the GT77 Titan could have had a professional card in it. Mate, that is exactly what this Creator Pro X17 is. I can't overstate enough. It is exactly the same as the Titan. It's got the same motherboard, it's got the same port layout, it's got the same chassis with just a couple of things tweaked to make it suitable for the business arena. And it changes the conversation completely because this outperforms that magnitudes. It's almost like the Creator X17 is from a different generation to Dell's current system with exactly the same spec. So the X17, it comes with, uh, well, there's a couple of variants, but the one that I've got here is the, I think it's the A12 UMS. It's got the 12900HX processor in. And the reason I say it's not, this video isn't all about this laptop is because Soon we're going to see 13th gen mobile workstations coming out in the market, maybe in four to five months time. But this has been out for a few months already, so new ones are on the horizon. So I don't want to make it all about this, but 12900HX, 16 core mobile processor in with 8P cores and 8E cores. It's got NVIDIA's flagship, best of the best, best you can get on the market right now, professional graphics card, which is the A5500 with 16 gigs of video RAM. It's got 64 gigs of DDR5 RAM, which isn't ECC because this is the 12900HX, not the 12950HX, which is the one that supports ECC. And it's also got a two terabyte NVMe solid state drive from Samsung. But inside of here, just like the Dell Precision, you've got four M.2 ports. So expandability is absolutely mental in here. Not to mention the fact that in some cases you can't upgrade dials if they've got the CAM module and this one's got normal sodium slots in. So the changes that MSI have made from the Titan, uh, very subtle, 
but I think it could make all the difference when it comes to uh, business buyers. They've stripped away all the RGB from the laptop. So the GT77 Titan has a light up shield on the chassis, that's gone. Also the rear of the unit, where you've got uh, the grill on the back right there. No LEDs there on the Creator Pro X17. That's all been stripped out as well. The only RGB you've got in here is the keyboard, which is still, it's not a Cherry MX keyboard, but it's still designed by Steel Series and they're just regular normal keys. You don't get the, the rattly mechanical switches that you get in the GT77 Titan. The Creator Pro X17 also comes with a 4K 120 Hertz display, which is simply beautiful. It, it's a stunning screen, 4K UHD, 100% of the Adobe RGB space. And it comes with a whole bunch of technology and software built into it, which shows you how it was color calibrated from the factory. And it, it's, it really is a stunning screen. The port layout as well, exactly the same as the Titan, because it's the same motherboard. You've got full size HDMI out, mini display out. You've got two USB-C ports there with one being display port capable. You've got three USB-A ports, two USB-Cs, SD card slot, and headphone jack also power out as well. So it's exceptionally well kitted out when it comes to ports. But the, oh, it's also got a fingerprint reader and also you've got your regular trackpad here and a sticker that says HDMI. <laughs> why, why is that there? I don't know. The thing that changes the entire conversation is the performance that this thing outputs. So when Intel released their Core HX 12th generation mobile processors that superseded the mobile Xeon platform, Core HX, <laughs> I did the launch for Core HX, obviously. So I was on stage at Intel Vision launching it. So I know quite a fair bit about this. It's the desktop part slammed into a mobile chassis. That needed a lot more power to make that CPU perform at its maximum capabilities. MSI did that with the GT77 Titan. They designed a whole cooling system just around that desktop part being slammed into a laptop. Dell, on the other hand, didn't. They just took the existing pretty much exactly the same chassis layout and cooling system that was in the previous generation, the 11th gen, what would have been the mobile Xeon 11955M, I think it is. And they just slapped the desktop part in here and hoped for the best. The best didn't happen. This thing can't perform anywhere close to the Titan. We're not talking insignificant margins of error here. We're talking huge, huge gains from this, this Creator Pro X17 over the Dell. So I'll give you a couple of examples on how this outperforms that Dell. So let's hop on over to the MSI Creator Pro X17 and we'll start with the Cinebench score. So this is, it's a synthetic benchmark, but it's representative of how the CPU performs in the chassis. The Creator Pro X17 with the 12900HX, as you can see, it scores 23186, which is melting hot for a lot. That is blisteringly good for a laptop. Dell, on the other hand, with the exact same CPU in a 17 inch chassis, the same as the X17, they're scoring around 14,000 to 16,000. And I, I just can't overstate enough how big of a difference it is from 14 to 16,000 up to 23,000 on Cinebench scores. This system's got a better cooling layout in it, which means it can, this, the CPU can run at much higher frequencies under full load, which is exceptionally important for professional workflows. The Dell, on the other hand, all the P cores and all the E cores are throttling significantly below uh, what Intel expects the CPU to run at. And that's why you end up with the scores that you get with Cinebench. And also looking at something like Invmoc, which is the benchmark that I designed for running Autodesk Inventor benchmarks on measuring your system. This is the laptop leaderboard. The, do, you, do you see a pattern emerging here with the top 10? See if you can spot something quite significant. They're all gaming laptops. Uh, the Asus G733CX, I'm not familiar with that unit, probably the SCAR SE, possibly, but that's currently sitting on top with the 12950HX, but it's got a gaming GPU in there. Same unit here, in fact, that's the same person. Uh, we've got one here, which is the 12950HX with another gaming gray, uh, gray graphics card in, but sitting in fourth place, or essentially third place, because this is the same system, is this one. It's the Creative Pro X17 A12 UMS with the NVIDIA RTX A 5500 graphics card in. So the top 10 systems are all gaming grade systems, aside from this one, which is not gaming grade. This one's got the A5500 in it, which means it's ISV certified for all professional applications from Ansys through to SolidWorks, through to Katia, through to most of Autodesk's applications. It's got the professional driver, so it's got the ISV support. The nearest professional system to this one is on page two in 15th place. 
and it is a Dell Precision 7670 at 58,000 Infmark points, which is an A2000 professional system with 12950HX. 58,000 is a dreadful score for a 12th gen Core HX. So Dell put in the 12th gen Core HX and couldn't extract any performance or out of it over and above what 11th gen units were getting. That's the generational difference that we've got now with MSI, Asus, Alienwares, Lenovo Legions, over and above what the professional vendors are putting out. The conversation's completely changed now. This Dell Precision is probably with a 12900HX or 12950HX, it's the same CPU, it's just got ECC support. 64 gigs DDR5, A5500, pretty much exactly the same as this. This unit comes in at around $10,000. This one here is around $5,000. It's still not cheap, but conversations change, mate. You've got to think about these now. I, I've been speaking to MSI about these because one of the main compelling reasons for going for a Dell is the extended support that you get with them. And MSI have said they do have business warranties, extended warranties for these with, with elevated levels of support for business customers. But having said that, there are still some aspects to a precision workstation that you're just not going to get in something from the likes of MSI. So Dell have got many years in the game when it comes to building professional mobile workstations. They've got smart card reader support, for example, which MSI doesn't. And again, that's going to be a game changer for a lot of businesses. Dell have got an ecosystem of accessories, which MSI don't. They've got their universal dock, which does work with the MSI, but with the Dell unit, you can charge your laptop through the dock. Uh, but that's also part of the problem as well. The Dell Universal Docks are only able to provide, I think it's 210 watts of power to the total system, whereas MSI have provided 330 watts. That's one of the main reasons why this laptop is not capable of performing anywhere close to the MSI. It's significantly underpowered. But Dell have got that ecosystem of accessories, docks, styluses. They've got you know, lap, just things like laptop bags and keyboards and mice, wireless keyboards and mice, which all they integrate with the, the Dell software. The software that comes with the units is nowhere near as good as what you get from the likes of Dell. Dell have got a whole bunch of optimizing software. So the Dell Optimizer, they've got the Dell Power Manager. It's all software, which is very well done. It's very well designed. It's very well presented and tailored for the laptop. Dell also give regular firmware and driver updates or the precision every week there's a new driver coming out what that update does who knows maybe it's just fixing niche edge cases don't know with the likes of msi though it, it's it's nowhere near as good unfortunately it's like they release a laptop and then they just issue the drivers on release and leave it there you get very few driver updates for the components for the gt77 titan for example there's been little to no driver updates since june 2022 they just released the unit and then just went that's it right we're done drivers work we're good Dell, on the other hand, weekly updates coming out. Also, I mean, the MSI Center, the, the, the main control hub that manages the entire laptop, this has been completely overhauled from what you get on the GT77 Titan, which is much appreciated because on the Titan, the software is an absolute mess. It's awful. It's gaming skin. It's filled with features which really don't do anything. They're not, there's no purpose for them. They're just solutions looking for problems. The MSI Pro Center, though, on the other hand, a lot less gumph in here, right? You've got your you know, you, you call it smart priority, other optimizer, the, the language isn't the best in here, but you can change the the system from being, you know, quiet mode through to extreme mode where you've got the fans running at full tilt. This is loud at full tilt when you're running things at max capacity. But on the other hand, when you're not doing something which is putting all the components at 100% use, it's deadly silent, it really is. It's deathly silent. I'm grateful for the fact that this center has been overhauled and it's not gaming skin. They've not reused what they've got on the Titan. But crucially within here as well, you can change, I'm not sure where it is, it's Mystic like there it is. You can change the keyboard RGB to either be off because yeah, the, the, the keyboard with the Creator X17 Pro, although the chassis doesn't have any RGB, the keyboard still does but you can turn that off or just set it to just be a bright white light, which is just an irregular backlit keyboard. And you can do that all through the MSI Center. Not lost on me the fact that with the GT77 Titan, you do have to download a separate SteelSeries GG app just to control the lighting on the laptop. You can't do it within the gaming MSI Center, but you can in the professional one. They seem to figure out how to do that. Uh, the battery in the laptop, by the way, not great. I mean, you, you don't buy professional mobile workstations of 17 inches to get good battery life out of it. It'll last you a couple of hours, just not even doing stressful work. If you do stressful work, probably an hour max. 
but the battery's not going to last you a full day. Uh, but that's just the kind of thing you expect with a mobile workstation. One other consideration that you need to take into account is if you are going to be moving around a lot, this thing is huge. It's the same size, like I said, as the GT77 Titan. Although this is 17 inches, this is the same chassis as the Creator X17 Pro. You've got this extra heat sink on the back, and that's what makes this perform the way it does better and better than the Dell. But it doesn't fit in most 17-inch laptop bags, so you will have to buy either a specialized larger bag to carry this around in, also considering the fact that the power supply is massive, it's not very portable. Dell, on the other hand, it's 17 inches. It'll fit in all 17 inch design laptop bags, but it's that compromise again. It's that trade off. Are you willing, just because you can carry this around, to accept the significantly lower performance that you're going to get out of this for almost double the price? Or buy one of these? Personally, me, I just use this as a fixed desktop replacement and it does the job for me. It does it exceptionally well. Now, moving forwards, there'll be an X, you know, Creative Pro X17 13th generation version coming out probably in the next six months or so. I'm very interested to see how the likes of Dell, HP, and Lenovo move forwards or whether they're just happy to sit so far behind the likes of MSI who are releasing units which are far ahead in performance. So it's going to be, yeah, that's why I say it's not so much about this laptop, it's about what this represents moving forward and the difference in value proposition from something like this okay thanks very much for watching that's the x17 pro if it is available to buy i'll link it in the description they are quite difficult to get a hold of from only select retailers but if you are in the market for a laptop i would seriously consider something like this with the professional driver support if you are uh, in in industry looking for a professional workstation it's got the isv support it's got the same cpu in as you would get in the likes of a dell precision Albeit, if you are an IT buyer, if you're an IT manager looking to buy a fleet of laptops, the Creator X17 Pro and a lot of these tier two, I think there would be vendors, they don't have the 50 core HX CPUs, which are the ones with uh, vPro built into them, which is all the Intel security management and remote services support. You're only going to get that in the Dell positions within 12, 950, 12, 8, 850 core HX CPUs. Anyway, thanks very much. That'll do it for this one. Hopefully, that was interesting. Hopefully you learned a little bit about what these offer and how much just how much they're embarrassing the likes of Dell when it comes to performance. Dell cannot claim, it is factually incorrect to say that these are the most powerful mobile workstations in the market. They are not anymore. Objectively, the likes of this one is and equivalents from the likes of Asus, which I don't have. Uh, but anyway, that'll do for this one. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.